Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Endgame. This episode is going to be about emergencies in VR. Woo! Yay! Woo-hoo. All right. Somebody call nine one one. Let's get it. Okay. <laughs> Oh. A... I'm waiting for the camera to come around and see us. He's doing like this dramatic pan of the whole crowd. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so was... well, before Go we get ahead. into the main topic, we want to do the community spotlight, right? Yes. 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 And so let's have Dr. Morty come up towards the front. Um, so, hey, Dr. Morty, uh, hey. how do you how how optimistic are you about th- how things are going to go here? Or how do you feel about the future um, just in general? For the, uh, well, 50% optimistic, I'd say, <laughs> in a good day. So yeah. you give us a 50-50 shot. Yeah, on a good day. Yeah. Today, that seems lazy. Can, 15. You, can you not lean one way or the other? Can you give 51% in, in some direction? <laughs> uh, yeah, towards not so good of a future, i will say. Oh, shit. Okay. He's in my camp. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Start prepping sorry, now. Yeah. Yes. The future is what we make it. And if you all turn into preppers, then you will have fucked us. And everyone who's dreaming yeah. of a better future is going to have everything taken away by you. If no, you have to join the filter. dreaming side. Yeah. My water filter mm-hmm. get me through. We'll do an episode on prepping, and then we'll be able to talk more about it. Well, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not prepping either, so. Yes. All right, good. Is there anything that you're sort of uh, excited about, like for the next hundred years? I hope, in terms of our society, I, I I hope we can get along better. I hope we can, you know, forget about our differences and just you know, be together as one. I don't think it's possible, but I hope. You don't think it's possible? No. Mm. I think we're we're some people are, are too different. So, like, I hope it could be possible, but as of right now. And the way we are going, I don't see it as I don't see it as possible. There's a lot think, of things that I, I think that need to change in order to be possible. Hmm. Do you think if some of those things change, uh, and I'm curious to hear what they are, like that we could get not that we'll all be one and kind of you know in harmony, but that we can get closer to that? Yeah, I think we can we can we can get closer, but um, I don't know. Maybe in a hundred years it could be possible. Right now, I don't see that we are going that way. Do you think we're in a particularly rough time with social media and like the way that things have sort of been cropping up and the way that, you know, the extremes are getting really loud? Or do you think that's just innate in us that we're not going to get along? Like it's not a problem of technology. It's just a core human issue. Now, in terms of the, the extremes, I think that sometimes they are the loudest, but they are not sometimes, I don't think they are the, the biggest group. It doesn't seem like that because that's all I hear is sort of like, really extreme views but i think you're right negative is the the loudest and you think that's the what mo- most people think and maybe it's because the people that are you know happy or agreeing or they they don't express their their point of view do you think we lean negative in the extreme because just in our psychology because like we're sort of i don't know evolutionarily more primed to be to like react to negative stimulus and like get away or I don't know. Yeah, I think it's like a representative bias, basically, that we have. Uh, so like we're we're exposed to more of the negative stuff in the news and things like that. So it's more salient in our minds. So it's easier to focus on. And I think you're making a great point, uh, Dr. Morty, that if if people are uh, happy, then they're not really tweeting about things that much, or they're not making the news. It's like when's the last time you heard in the news that someone was like, had a great day, and you know you know breaking news on fox 5 or what you know it's like that never happens so we always hear about the bad things um you know so yeah i think that can make that can make us perceive things to be worse and i think vr is actually bringing us closer together and it's connecting unusual like groups that might not meet each other in real life so that we can recognize that we all have similar interests and maybe do some of that uniting um so yeah, what technology, I guess for you, Dr. Morley, what technologies do you think are going to facilitate, do you think that technology is going to be a role for that? Well, I think that, you know, here in VR chat, technology is already bringing us a lot closer. Uh, we get to have these conversations, we, we get to you know, discuss and maybe agree or disagree, but we get to have the conversation. Uh, I think that's a huge step forward. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think really it's important. a pivotal moment. <laughs> I think like virtual reality will be looked back on, or at least social virtual reality 
will will be on the on the map of like how we've sort of changed culturally and like the big moments in society. Mm. Um, so like there were I, we heard a couple of interesting things about you the other night. Why can't you be in VR? I think that's an interesting thing before we start. Uh, yeah. So uh, I have something called uh, Alice in Wonderland syndrome. It sounds made up. I know uh, it's not. Uh, there's not a lot of people that that have it. I think there's not a lot of information about it. But uh, it's a problem with perception. It's not in the eyes. It's a problem with the brain. Basically, it's like I'm watching whatever I'm looking at. It can become really small and far away or really close to me and big. Sometimes both things at the same time. So it's really weird. And what happened when I was using, uh, I had the Oculus Rift. What happened when I was using it is that when I had one of those episodes, um, instead of looking um, at whatever it was in the screen, uh, larger or smaller, I would see the pixels. So suddenly I would have different colors of pixels shifting all the time, uh, turning into small and big, and I would get nauseous, I would get dizzy, and I would get a migraine. I try to you know, use it for a while, but the thing is the migraine stays for a couple of hours. So I would have to get off VR chat and just you know try to relax. You know, finally one day I I, I got so dizzy I decided to power through it and uh, ended up puking. So that's when I decided to not use it anymore and oh, sell the, the the headset. Yeah, I hope that you know if there's a screen with higher resolution in the future, maybe the Vive Pro. I don't know. Um, maybe that could be better. But um, yeah, as of right now, I, I have the the computer to be able to use it. I have the space, I have the means to buy it, but my brain just doesn't want me to use it. I mean, that's really unfortunate because like, you know, we're all excited about VR and everything. I feel like the resolution will help if it's a perception problem. I I don't know, I doubt that Vive Pro is gonna make the difference, right? Like it pro the resolution has to get to a point where you're not oh, seeing the really pixels anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at least in the meantime, like you're able to get into VR chat, right? And it seems like you enjoy this place anyway, just in desktop mode, yeah. because you still get to socialize and everything. Yes, the, the experience is, is different. I don't get to move, but uh, yeah, I still enjoy it. Thank you very much for sharing. Let, let's you. transition yeah, into the, the main topic. Um, so I think I, I would like to start there with like, I became interested in this whole idea on from seeing that seizure video. So do we want to yeah. sort of give like a brief description for anybody who hasn't seen that? Basically, the yeah, the person had, um, it seems like they, they kind of had a seizure. Everyone was just kind of, you know, hanging out and everything. And this person got on the ground and was kind of shaking and making noises. And people really didn't know what to do. And, you know, people kind of went up. At first, people didn't acknowledge it. But then as more and more people started to realize it was a serious situation, people crowded around. And most people were saying, is there anything I can do to help or like, are you okay and everything and they kind of felt power it kind of highlighted this powerless situation of someone having a medical emergency in vr but there was almost nothing to um you know what what do you actually do about that yeah how, how did you feel about the response like i think you were kind of positive right like yeah I mean, people sort of responded bunch, well to, i think it, it takes a lot of power to break a social situation like if you walk into a room and there's all mayhem going on. People are talking in this corner and that corner. It takes a lot for everyone all of a sudden to become quiet and centered and focused around one thing that's occurring. And I think the fact that that happened so quickly shows that there was like this kind of wave of general concern or interest um, that went around that everyone kind of gathered around the person and focused on it. Um, and not my interpretation was the attention was positive, but I'm not, I mean, I'm curious, yeah, what you think. Um, I mean, what other people think too about yeah, about the reaction. I, I was a little bit more negative, but it sort of flew in the face of everything I was reading from everyone else. And m most people were, because were, this was also on the heels of the uh, Ugandan Knuckles thing sort of really peaking and, you yeah. know, VR chat becoming sort of like this horrible joke of like, it's just this chaotic meme. And so then this thing happened and it was like, oh, look, people can stop memeing yeah. and they they can be quiet for 10 minutes and try to take seriously like a situation. I felt from watching the video, there were a couple of people that took it seriously. The majority, it took them quite a while. And even towards the end, there's still fucking memers in there and people who are like running up to the person. There, there was one person who was wearing some kind of crazy avatar that had like a lot of blinking lights. 
Yeah, like, like I found McDonald's it so frustrating that that person didn't run away or switch their avatar. Like maybe they were completely yeah. unaware. And I saw a comment that it's unlikely that the seizure was like a photo sensitive thing. Like that's only three percent or of seizures, or so, I don't know statistically mm. how likely it was like a photo sensitivity. But I think you just have to assume, right? Like even if it's a really unlikely chance, if if something like that is happening. Uh, we have this fucking helmet on our on our head that yeah, is like when I walk into up our brain. to you, yeah, yeah, it's like it's obnoxious and like just waving my hand in front of you can give you a lot of like crazy imagery very quickly. Yeah. And if you're sensitive to it, that could be really bad. Um, but no one studied so this. I was disappointed. Probably like inducing seizures with virtual reality and the oh. differences. Is this any worse than watching television? As far as like people who are Actually, photosensitive, I don't know. yeah, we'd have to ask seizure research researchers you, you know who do research on these because there's probably but i know that stimuli can induce different things seizures being one of them um you know psychotic breaks being another panic attacks um potentially a heart attack if someone gets stressed enough and they're you know have the right risks i mean there's all sorts of medical emergencies that could happen um like pretty bad i think actually this kind of non-fatal seizure and he was okay afterwards is very lucky it's very rare that 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 like someone would be thrown on the ground and very ill, and then I mean a seizure is one one of those things that kind of explains that. Um, but you know, it's it pretty scary I think to see that overall. So we we threw this topic out to Discord, and a couple of people talked about it, and and they kind of quickly jumped to like what should VR chat do, and what should the responsibilities of the platform be, and and look into the future. We can get there, but I'm sort of more curious just immediately today, like, what should we do in general in these situations? Like, if it happens tomorrow where I'm in a room and something like that's happening, what's, like, the best way to react? Like, I feel like my priorities would be to, like, try to calm other people down and give yeah. room to the person that's suffering from whatever the problem is. Because... I think this is probably worse than television or looking at a computer screen because it's attached to your face. And so if something happens it, and you're, you fall down, it's still on your face and whatever imagery there is, it's, it's like, and you, may, you might not be in the right mindset to like close your eyes or whatever. Like you, you, you might be stuck with this, you know, with whatever this information is like flowing into your mind. And so we just have to take that into account and sort of, I don't know, take it as seriously as possible, even if it's, somebody who might be trolling or it might, you know, it might be a joke, whatever. I think no matter what, we sort of just have to take it seriously and give room and sort of try to calm the whole room down. Right. Like I, I that's the only thing yeah, I can imagine a, that we should actually do at this point. Yeah. That's exactly what my mind went to. I mean, I'm curious what other people think too, but I, I, my mind went exactly to uh, when you were asking the question that people can focus on, changing other people's reactions to the situation like we can't there's two things one is like you can try to help the person if it's some kind of crisis or something like that like directly talking to them um although that can get tricky depending on the type of crisis it is but um we can all talk to other people and say hey stop or like exert some peer pressure on other people who might be making the situation worse or facilitating the negative situation that's creating the or you know contributing to the medical emergency that you can tell people, you know, to back off and that if multiple people did that, like if two or three people in the in the seizure video said to the people who were memeing, hey, stop, we need to take this seriously, something's happening, um, all of a sudden the meme person, but you know, everyone, it's like the antithesis of the meme, the reaction. It's like people are like, hey, let's be serious. And like they're completely rejected and they have to change their behavior in order to be socially accepted into that situation again. So I think, yeah, I think that's a really a good way that we can pressure people. Um, I, I don't to, know if I'm being too pessimistic, but like I, I have a feeling that like not you, you, you won't be able to get a hundred percent of people. Like I feel like there are some people that are so detached from the experience that's happening here, and it it doesn't it doesn't seem like real life, and so it doesn't count, and so like their behavior doesn't matter, and so anything you say might not affect them. I assume you mm. just try to vote kick them in that case. I I don't know. Yeah. Like if, the other thing that you mentioned, like, so we can quiet down the room and then we can talk to them. Like, I think that is extremely valuable because if you're going through some kind of emergency and you have this headset on, like, though we can't physically do anything, like we sort of feel helpless, 
we do have this communication, like, and that can be extremely valuable for someone who's like going through a crisis, I imagine, because you could get very confused, right? Like you, uh, you're, who knows where your mind might go in that moment. And just someone who's sort of talking to you calmly and trying to assess the situation. And, you know, even if we don't have any expertise or we don't know what to actually do, just trying to establish some kind of communication, I think is helpful, right? I think so. I mean, I think it's helpful to talk to the other people and try to communicate with them. It just depends on the situation. I mean, I don't know what kinds of situations people think are most likely to happen. Like what, what kind of emergencies should we be prepared for and those kinds of things. I guess this is all part of technology, you know. Also, uh, you're so slightly I, crouched. Well, fuck you. This is how I stand now. <laughs> I guess I can... <laughs> Let me I'll get up here. Um, no, you can just okay. hit the sit stand button. You can toggle it and then it'll... Uh... Yeah, I look okay now? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. For a second there, you were broken. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're just like kind of so like... Let, let's just... <laughs> <laughs> Let's assume this is when we're we're gonna cut back in. So I think we should sort of quickly explain what what happened, right? Okay. Okay. So so welcome back. Um, so we had an incident like a troll or someone was able to flash our screens with a bunch of like flashing colors and a message that could potentially I think cause like a photosensitive seizure, right? And they said, "I hope you have a seizure." So that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> that's really disappointing. What should we do in, in this circumstance, right? Like, what's the best way to sort of report something like a, this kind of an incident? Like, I know that you're supposed to record for like two minutes, but what if something like this happens and, you know, there's not, we're not prepped? Like, what, what, I mean, what so, should we do? So we have a moderation report form. On our Discord, it's, it's, it's there, so you can see it. Um, I believe on our website, it's also linked, um, but you would just be able to say, log that report. Um, and that is in the support channel in Discord. Uh, it's also going to be on the website very, very shortly um, to make that easy. It'll be at like yourchat.com slash moderation, something very easy to tell people. Um, the form's nice because it has fields for you guys to send over, you know, um, pictures or whatever. We love uh, proof and there's some instructions there. But you can also email moderation at vrchat.com. That's completely fine. We field those. Yeah. Okay. There you go, straight uh, from the Gunter's mouth. I'm excited. I mean, I think this the updates that um, Ron and Gunter are talking about, I think are really exciting, like the panic button and things like that. Um, I think it's going to help in some ways, but in other ways, it's kind of hard. What we've been talking about with these health emergencies, it's like, that's probably not going to do, it's not really going to help the situation for the person who's in some, I mean, actually, if someone's in some kind of mental health crisis, perhaps it could, like, they could get, get everyone out or things like that. But it's just hard to have something that really effectively help someone who's in like some kind of medical crisis or having like how do you a help someone health. how do you help someone playing halo that's on another team that just drops their controller and you can hear them choking what do you, what do they do right they, yeah there's not yeah i mean there's tons I mean, of multiplayer nothing. games i feel like because yeah. it's vr it definitely makes it more immediate mm -hmm. right and so i actually have connected. a tool that, yeah as a developer, we can, and I actually helped had this tool made because I wanted to be able to pull people out of instances, and it's a warp just me and the person to a private instance. In VR, it's definitely different because you're you're with you feel like you're with people, and I think that's where the difference is. So yeah, there's tools like that that are simple and quick. You can pull somebody out, it can just make sure they're okay. See if it's not a goof around or a troll or other issue. Yeah, that's interesting because I could imagine, I mean, I've worked on suicide hotlines. I've worked on rape crisis hotlines. There's, I mean, there's lots of things that can happen. It's cool that you guys are thinking of systems like that because I think those kinds of things eventually could be helpful. It's more a question of when so, something like this happens as opposed to if it will happen, just given the popularity and number of people who are in here. Like, over time, the percentage chance of something really bad happening increases. Um, so then it's like, what do you do? and you know, how do you have tools? But then also, I don't think VR chat should be liable, exactly like you're saying. Like, you can't be everywhere at once and addressing these kinds of issues, you know. I don't want to talk for VR chat here. I just want to talk more personally, though. I also feel as if uh, I like freedom. And so for me, I'm driving my car and they tell me I got to wear a helmet and an orange inflatable suit and all these other, like, as a human being, I sort of have, it's nice to have the freedoms to choose to do what you want to do. Like, no one's stopping me eating pizza even though that's making me, you know, over, like there's all these things in life that you make choices on. And I feel like 
where does that stop if you start to try it? But the helpful side of it, I can see. So the legislation side, I think, is that's a sticky wicket. That's a that's some there's problems there for in, in all walks of life, in every not just VR, but in gaming and like sports, driving everything. Um, but what I do like the idea for is that potentially there is some kind of like just like there is in real life, you can call nine one one and they even get abused. But there there is a like I'm actually having a problem here. Um, and then we would, you know, we'd take action if it was real, and if it wasn't, there would be consequences. But we can't That's really do anything. If, someone's, if someone logs in from a VPN and they're in some kind of raid, right. wherever they are, and so they have an issue, like, we, there's no, I'm not sure if there's a way for anybody to find that person. I mean, when someone on our Discord, uh, our Deep Thoughts Discord, was talking about uh, a having headsets, basically, like, if the person wanted to, kind of like a heart donor, you can choose to be an organ donor. You could choose to register your information with the headset, which they already have, honestly, your shipping information when you bought it or whatever. But you could choose to register that so that if something negative, if something really bad happened and something needed to be triggered, then 911 would know where you are. And that's, we're starting to see that with cell phones actually already. But then think about the trolls. It's like, <laughs> I mean, that same well, troll would have called 911 and all of us if, if they could, you know? Yeah. So, I, I, so I, I a think similar it does system to OnStar? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good analogy for it. When I was hearing that stuff, like that makes sense to me sort of in the deeper future. And I, I think that Ron's right, that it's sort of going to be a personal responsibility thing. Like it's not something you're necessarily going to set up in VR chat or in whatever multiplayer game you're playing, but you're wearing this device, like our headset and the hand, like you're getting a lot of information that potentially like maybe within a decade or something, maybe there's an, an AI or something watching all this information and there's an algorithm analyzing all your movements and it can identify when there's a problem uh, and do something about it. But like, it will have to be on your end, right? Because like once you, I, I, I do like, I, I feel like if you do put those tools out into the platform itself, then it does become very susceptible to like trolling or whatever. Like it almost like swatting, right? Like someone can, yeah. like if you yeah. have an emergency number and someone, a hacker can get access to that, then they'll use it. Like, so it has to be somehow kept away in private. Yeah, it is. What about the Apple? Does anyone know if the Apple Watch, because the Apple Watch, like, for example, registers your, your heartbeat or your heart rate, right? And you can use fitness trackers and stuff like that. To, yes. I w almost wonder if there's a way to tether that those kind of already existing devices. Like, if I have a Life Alert bracelet, it would be cool to be able to tag, you know, have some API to hook in, registering with your friends, too, so that you could I could register my information with you. So if I something, I am, I do have a disability or I do have a problem, and then I could do something so that you would it sounds mm. funny but you would even be able to teleport to where i'm at and be able to understand something's going on and and you would also have authority to uh call 911 or call a family yeah, member or a limited do something. friend yeah mm -hmm. yeah that you chose interesting that seems and inevitable are, as yeah. this place slowly becomes like closer to the real world like you know in, in the real world that's how it will sort of work but with, with the exception of being able to teleport um are you wearing your apple watch right now yeah Mm -hmm. Is it like monitoring your heart rate? Yeah, and I'm also enrolled in a study now. That's mon that's and they'll they'll call me if they detect abnormal heart rates, and I'll talk to a, a video conference with a heart doctor or a cardio cardiologist. Uh, you know, has uh, that happened to you? The abnormal part, no, yeah. <laughs> thankfully. But I do have alerts of my watch when I was really nervous uh, when we first started Endgame, and I'd never been up like I don't know in front of this many people, and I like my watch would say. Uh, we detected an abnormally high heart rate for your activity level. Like, is everything okay? Kind of thing. What if you fall in love and then all of a sudden the paramedics show up? <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> the, yeah. the algorithm has to be more sophisticated. It has to be able to, to tell the difference between love and heart attack yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, with these VR headsets, they could actually put brain monitors, whatever you call those sensors. And... The EEG. Yeah, whenever they build a headset, it would have its own unique number and whatnot. And since you're already on the internet when you use VR, if it detects brainwaves where would be like a heart attack or a stroke or whatever, then it would throw up a red flag kind of thing. And yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Um, and then call the paramedics on you. Yeah. But we're just getting to be able to detect a heart attack from the best wearable sensors that aren't integrated into a headset yet. I think that's going to happen in the future that that's a really good idea that like we'll be able to have sensors in the headset itself that are tracking these things. And they'll, they'll want to track it for all these, you know, 
or, or harder games and all those kinds of things too. Like your heart rate is a really valuable data. Um, but uh, even the wearable sensors could be connected as well. Um, so this idea of automatically tracking if someone's not doing well, I guess, and, and having some way to trigger. I mean, how many people here, if there was something where they knew that like you could register with like, you know, Oculus or something, and they already have your information. But like, how many people mm. would actually do that in, in case of a health? Kind of thumbs situation? down if you're really opposed to it, too. Like, thumbs up if you would do it. Thumbs mm, down if you I'm think that's a I'm, bad I'm, idea. I'm, til I'm tilting the thumb down because I see the I see the, yeah. the benefits, but yeah. I also don't want yeah. to pay a huge medical bill because my headset misfired. Yeah. I've had uh, relatives that had, uh, I don't want to go into it too much, but I have had, I've dealt with uh, people that have had seizures and they generally don't play video games or don't hang out in VR. Like that's just, you just don't, you wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> um, the second level is like people that just get sick or maybe they don't realize that there something would happen to them and then something does happen and they get nauseous or they have a seizure or something. I think that's mm. where I think they personally, I would, if I was them, um, I'd probably want a panic button inside the thing to get me out of the area. And all the thing is with people who have seizures, their muscles tense up and they don't, they're unable to actually do anything um, for a while. So like that auto detection might be helpful, but you know, I, I that's going to be a one-time thing. I feel like if they have that medical condition, they would should probably be wearing something even out, even now outside of the, the VR mm. sensors. I would imagine to, to to deal with that or be around family members or do, you know doing it safely. Um, again, yeah. we can't legislate can't legislate how safe someone is. And then there's there's all the way down. If you go down the line, there's all the way to death. Like at some point, you're going to have if you have millions of people in VR, there's going to be the first VR death. Like for exactly, it, it's morbid, but like that we that we're all finite human beings. Yeah. Like we all have a finite lifespan, and weird things happen all the time. But I feel like I'd want to to first start with like what you're saying, like stuff that's um, like if I have a medical condition and I'm trying something. I feel like I should be relying on that equipment and family and friends as a first support system. And I feel like if that can be yeah. proven, then the next support system could be integrated. And test subjects, I guess, um, mm -hmm. for yeah. stress, and that would I think that hardcore yeah. stuff would lead to then the non-hardcore stuff. Detecting whether your heart rate's going, you know, regular or it's really, really low is going to show something, uh, and blood pressure. If, if those two things change dramatically and don't change, don't come back, then there's a medical issue. I feel like yeah. once you get to the hardcore stuff, and you can maybe detect later, like your vestibular system and getting sick, it could even warn you, like you're gonna, you're starting to get sick. Maybe you should not do as much motion or something. Because I think that's another thing in in VR is people are cool, they're cool, and then all of a sudden they get sick. Um, yeah. And there's reasons for that. It'd be nice to have a warning. I think once eye tracking happens, it'll also be possible for. I think there'll be a way to detect emotional states. Uh, there'll be a way to detect cognitions, like if someone's uh, having social anxiety and they're looking away from people with their eyes while they have their headset on and their heart rate goes up slightly or, um, you know, you're looking down more or whatever, those things are going to be correlated with emotional states and then you could have an AI pop up and uh, be like, oh, you know, what's going on? You're or looking like direct sad. you to something. Yeah, yeah. Is it, like like, Is it like Clippy where he's like, hey, yes. it looks like you're running a hey, letter. Hey, you're looking sad. it looks like you're having a heart attack. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh it looks God. like you're passing out. <laughs> I, I kind of want to step just back. Just Clippy. So taking that, into, <laughs> taking that into consideration, and like you were asking if people would sign up for something like that today, like, and most people said no. There was like four or five thumbs down. I'm, I'm curious for people who said they wouldn't sign up. Like, is it a privacy concern? Like, would you say not trust Oculus with that information or? Whatever, whatever like major dash. company, like like with your eye tracking, like it, is anybody willing to talk about that? Is that's the case for you, Catapult? Like you just don't trust yeah, the big it, it, corporation, or? Well, it's not just the big corporations. It's just that we are being monitored a little too much for my liking. You can't do nothing on the web without somebody knowing what you're doing. Um, you know, a perfect example: you go on Facebook and ads show up. The stuff that's relevant to what you just purchased not too long ago and crap like that is like, you know, buzz off. It's none of your damn business. But um, no, it's like whether I die in VR or I die out there in a real world, it's the same bloody difference. Um, you know, you're going on a real roller coaster, your heart rate's going to go up. You go on a roller coaster in VR, your heart rate's going to go up, you know, because it's fooling your senses that that much. Mm. Um, so what's the difference whether 
you have a heart attack on a roller coaster, chances are you're worse off on a real roller coaster <laughs> than you are having a heart attack in your living room and your wife looks at you and calls 911. That's true. Wow. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, that's a good that's, analogy. Yeah, but also you mentioned people are tracking too much and eye tracking comes up and it's always about foveated rendering. Oh, yay, we're going to have this amazing graphics. That's not <laughs> what I think about. If Oculus all of a sudden had eye tracking or one headset that has eye tracking, will you use it? And yeah, because the I, company will probably be able to have all that data. Probably I wouldn't bother. I might, I might try it just out of curiosity to see if it's cool or what. Mm. But if it starts uh, being an invasion of privacy, no, I don't want it. That's when Owlboy the ads are going to show up. Yeah, <laughs> and you won't be able to look away. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's when they're going to sell you the clippy that's better for all the different conditions yeah. you have for extra five yeah. bucks. Yeah. 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 It's funny, like it's a merch to store. You're just going to start seeing ads for their clothes, like every, every time you walk into another world. Yeah. Like, uh, I, sure. I just would love to know if, if eyeballs are really truly on their ads. If if I'm looking, Alba, if I'm looking at your shirt and I'm looking at your the circle, like right now, my the only data that one could get is my head is in this direction with all these avatars. Once we have mm -hmm. eye tracking, it'll know I'm looking at your shirt. I'm looking at the circle on it that says Endgame. So maybe I'll see an ad for custom T-shirts from Custom Ink that are that exact, like you know. Yeah. That no man, Clippy. You know, that's what we're gonna. That's he's gonna, gonna pop up. Hey, Clippy, you're looking <laughs> envious. You, oh, are you liking that shirt? I can buy you that shirt for you know whatever. Click on this link, and like it's gonna it's uh, gonna react to your medical condition right, and to... sell you something in return. Going back to the subject of eye tracking and heart rate monitoring, I do uh, hypnosis here and VR chat along with meditation and stuff like that. I have a key word that basically I go under immediately. I go into that trance-like state so you'll see my heart rate plummet you'll see all activity on my body slow down and you'll probably see my brain waves go nuts of me just waiting for something to happen um i mean wouldn't that also fire off that heart rate warning i mean there's many possibilities you're trying to track all this stuff and everybody is a special case um i mean how would you differentiate going under hypnosis compared to a heart attack or a blood clot yeah, it yeah. seems very individual based, right? Like we're all kind of well, built a little bit differently. Or is that not the case? We are, but well, I think Ron made an excellent point that, you know, we'll have to do trials with this. So like, he, you know, the reason he's saying like keep with the medical devices that they have now is that they have FDA approval and there's thousands of people who go through them to make sure that there that there aren't those false positives and things like that. Because you're talking about basically a false positive where it detects something that's actually not there. Um, but I think that there's some things that probably will be able to be detected, like your heart stopping that will be, um, or like at, at normal heart rates, like going into a, um, you know, kind of meditative state would probably have a more a lower heart rate and maybe you, your stress would um, decrease or something like that, but you might will still be functioning kind of normally, but it's a good, it's a good point. Like Ghoster, if, if you're being hypnotized to the point where your heart stops, like I caution you, like, that's too deep. <laughs> the yeah. thing is, my heart isn't stopping. I'm, I'm just saying the sudden rapid change of what we were describing as something that might, you know, throw that false positive. Mm. I wonder if you will transcend um, through meditation one day <laughs> or just being hypnotized. Maybe. <laughs> Let's talk further into the future what, what's going to happen. And so I think we've already covered it to some degree. Like, we are wearing more and more of these sensors and AI will get better and better at identifying individual, you know, parameters that you'll fit, you know, fit into or whatever. And I, I think a lot of the stuff will eventually be taken care of automatically. Like I, I mean, the only thing I can see standing in the way is our hesitation about trusting, like, who am I going to trust? Like, am I going to trust Microsoft with all of my medical information because they'll yeah. keep me safe or like we have to sort of, that to me is the main hurdle because like these big corporations can have a lot of power to serve us, right? Like they could take advantage of all the resources and algorithms to provide medical help or, or, um, you know, mental help or what, whatever, but it can all be abused because it's so powerful. So like that, I think that's my hesitation about the future. Um, how, yeah. How do you feel about things going forward? Yeah, I feel the same way. I think that um, I think we're going to give up a lot more privacy 
for health. I think that's going to be uh, Google's already chomping at the bits for all of our health data. They're saying that they can analyze it and figure out if you're at risk. You know, if you're if you're going if you're going to have cancer and you know at risk for heart attacks. I think people when they think about live life versus death, they'll be they'll be willing to give up a lot. Um, to if people are willing to go with their privacy for Facebook for you know kind of the junk food of social validation, they're definitely going to be able to give up their privacy to live longer or you know th that perception. So. I do think we're going to experience that, but I also think that we, it'll avoid crises. Like we might be able to detect cancer earlier or other things. So there's a plus and a minus, but I think, you know, living longer is going to become possible through these body worn sensors and things like that, that help to prevent emergencies and there'll be auto detections. And um, at some point, I think we might look back at this conversation and think that this was just a gap in time when you had to actually call 911 and actually tell the emergency people that there was something wrong as opposed to them automatically detecting it and from that second, you know, the drone delivering the uh, clippy to come, you know, give you CPR or whatever. <laughs> Hey, Clippy! Clippy. Yeah, he's here. Of Clippy. Yes. Clippy. Hello there. Are you going to see a heart attack? Clippy? Buy that T-shirt. That was fast. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, he was the T-shirt while he was talking. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Man, we didn't talk a, a lot about this, but like, so like, let's briefly that the person who did the that whatever that was where they flashed that screen at us, like, like obviously they should be you know, perma banned from VR chat or whatever platform they're on. But like, I think we need to get to the day where that actually is breaking a, a law in the real world. Like, cause you're, you can physically right. actually have the potential to actually harm a real human being. Like there's a, it's a real uh, crime. It, it, it's not, it's like people who come in here and everything doesn't count because it's like, it's just right. a prank or it's just a game and it's not real. Some things should count, and uh, those kind of real threats, like they need to have real world consequences. And I think we'll get there eventually, but it's going to be really weird. Like, uh, I, w I wonder how the law is going to be implemented into this whole system. I think it's going to, I can't imagine it happening very soon, but we'll see. Well, I, I think I'm excited that, you know, we're talking about this because I think we're on the frontier of this. Like, we're going to look back on this time as a define, like you said, as a defining moment of, shifting our societal norms and cultural norms and laws and things like that as more and more people use this technology so uh i think it's i think it's exciting we're like you know we get to be the people who talk about this stuff and try to figure out what should be done and i think these kinds of conversations are important to have so that we can figure out and maybe eventually it'll get to lobbying but you know who knows because facebook's lobby is much more powerful than our voices anyway but um you know we can try to i don't know figure some of this stuff out because you, it should be illegal for what that guy did you know all right are we do you think we wrapped it up do you think we're good yeah yeah thank you for dedicated audience and participants <laughs> and everything for staying with us for this whole time and going through like five worlds let's take a photo i i kept right, i, I could have taken more but i see a couple clippy yeah and small avatars in the, in the front okay i'll go in the back let me say hurry up captain Oh, the numbers are still here. <laughs> yes. Alrighty, guys. Oh. Um, I don't know. I need a. I need a catchphrase. Flippy. It's like give Flippy a catchphrase. Flippy. 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 Yeah.